I'm going to read some messages for you. Um, about a month and a half ago, I got these messages in my inbox from somebody that I really looked up to. I looked up to as a mentor. Um, he was an architect that has his own firm. He's connected to academia in Denmark, and he's also connected to juries for architecture competitions. And this is somebody that I would talk with regularly about architecture theory, about the industry, and this is somebody that I really personally looked up to. So the first message that I'm going to read is from three months ago recently. So he says, well, I must admit that when I saw your image for the first time, I thought that she looks cool and hot. I saw this message and um, I didn't respond. Um, and then he sent me a shrug emoji and he said, did I write something wrong now? And my first instinct um, was to play it off. So I said, oh, it's, it's all fine. I was out jogging, you know. Um, when you get a message like this as a young woman from somebody in your career, um, somebody who's well known, your first instinct is to, you know, sort of, is it a compliment? Is it a pass? Okay, let's put the brakes on things. Let's deflect and move on to something else. And that's what I tried to do. I tried to deflect. And then about a month and a half ago, um, I posted just an innocent story of myself with a mask. He sent a kissing emoji and said, even with a mask, you look good. You know, okay, this could be a compliment, I said, I thought. So I said, you know, I'm bringing the mask fashion, that's why. And he, re he responded, good, I always found you hot, crying emoji face with the mask. So again, you know, he's escalated it. Now it's no longer a compliment, it's, it's a comment on my appearance again. And so, you know, I was really not comfortable with this. I put my foot down and I said, I'm happily married, so I prefer to keep our relationship professional. Thank you. And this is, <laughs> this is when he kind of went a little nuclear. He was like, what? As if, shrug emoji, I was trying to be funny. You completely blew it. Hand and face emoji. Um, so my, <laughs> initially I thought, oh no, you know, I've totally misread the situation. Like, I'm the one who blew this out of proportion. So I said, oh no worries then, sorry. In the US it would mean something quite different to say that, you know, cultural difference. <laughs> and I was trying to give him an out, like, oh, you know, my bad, like, let's move on. He doubled down and said, nope, you think too high of yourself. So, you know, at that point I was just like, okay. <laughs> um, I didn't know how to handle this. I was so, uh, so uncomfortable because this is somebody that I saw in my field as having a lot of power and you know if I didn't handle this the right way he could go behind my back and ruin my reputation in the Danish building industry um, but I, I decided to put my foot down I blocked him um, and um, this was a good couple of weeks before me to really hit Denmark so I see a lot of misconceptions flying around about um, harassment and uh, that's because a lot of politicians right now are coming out with their stories and so a lot of people feel like, okay, this, this could potentially be a power grab. Um, and while I understand that, um, I think people need to remember that harassment is inherently about power. Um, in my experiences, yes, I did experience harassment in Denmark. Denmark is definitely one of the most egalitarian countries I've ever been in. And that's because you have maternity leave and you have paternity leave. So, for example, in the States, in architecture school, I was openly told, don't have kids. You know, if you have kids, no one's going to take you seriously as an architect. You're going to think that you can't balance both. But when I came to Denmark, that was a complete non-issue because of maternity and paternity leave being so protected. I had so many female bosses and it was amazing. Um, and I felt that I was respected um, in, in so many more ways than I was in the States. But I did still experience harassment 
And what was worse was that when I felt that I was experiencing harassment, I felt that there was no system in place that would protect me and protect my career if I'd wanted to report something. And I also faced harassment in school. And I was also very, very, very uh, unhappy to realize that there really is no way to report harassment if a teacher focuses on you and fixates on you and targets you specifically there's n I found that there was nothing I could really do and have it taken seriously to make it stop so I want to steer the conversation more in that direction I don't want people to look at me and see me as a victim or an opportunist this is why everyone is anonymous in these stories I've removed offending details um, I just want us to be able to look at harassment with open eyes and realize a few things. So, serial harassers tend to pick victims that are easy to target. They pick people that have power lesser than them that they can then exploit and use to coerce um, and bully, essentially. It's, it's, a, it's a power play. And so it's totally plausible that somebody can both be a harasser and be seen as a good, upstanding co-worker or person or father and yet have this other side to them where they do this. Um, and I think a lot of people struggle with this. It's, it's not scary, bad people. It's people you know. It's people, you know, that you might have made excuses for. Um, and this is why I think maybe <laughs> regular people like myself and need to maybe feel a little bit more comfortable talking about this stuff. And the reason why we don't feel comfortable talking about it is because we see how people treat the women who do come forward. Um, we see the skepticism, we see, you know, the really nasty comments, and we retreat. We think, okay, maybe I, I can't talk about this. Maybe, you know, if I bring this up, people are going to think I'm a liar. Maybe I'm the party that made this happen. It's my fault. And these are all things that I, as a young woman, struggled with. Um, until we start changing the narrative, until we, until we start changing the, the culture of protecting the harasser rather than the person who has been harassed, these things aren't really going to change. So, yes, I was harassing Denmark. But, you know, what would I like to see going forward? I would like to see an avenue, some sort of more impartial system where people can not only report what's going on, but maybe an avenue where they can even begin to start discussions. You know, <clears throat> I didn't want to ruin a person's career. I just wanted an apology, or not even that. I just wanted to be left alone. I wanted to you know, complete my study with no problems and not worry about my grades. I, I wanted to you know, continue with my career, do good work, and when these things happened, I was more fixated on trying to avoid a person that I had to find a way to work with um, with these issues because they weren't being dealt with. And I felt too that if I reported them, then you know I was the one who would have my career moved because I'm the one who's speaking up, I'm the problem. And that's just because who are you going to trust? Are you going to trust a 20 year old girl who just started as an intern? Or are you going to trust the colleague that you've been working with for eight years? Are you going to trust the 20 year old girl who's the student of the teacher that is famous and lauded or you know? Who are you going to who are you going to choose? Who are you going to trust? We need impartiality and we need a better system. To close things off, I just want to say that this is not an issue that only affects women. This is an issue that affects men too. And I find that I'm worried that if this happens to men too that they don't feel comfortable talking about this because there's just some sort of perception that they wanted it somehow and that they're not man enough if they don't want it. So I want us all to be able to tackle this head on and I want us to look at people who have experienced this and have empathy for them. 
And I think if we do so, then we're just going to create work environments that are a lot safer and a lot kinder and a lot better for people.